are builders, we are crafters, we are fighters, we are Bear Hill Shire. Courage student Elizabeth Halverson, Elizabeth Peter's daughter with Bear Hill Shire, and today we are making a crock pot roast beef. So our ingredients for this are going to be about two teaspoons of olive oil, which we already have in our cast iron. We're going to use about an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of pepper, eighth to a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're gonna use a teaspoon of, if not two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, half a teaspoon of both garlic and onion powder, teaspoon of thyme, half a cup of red wine, two cans of cumin mushroom soup, and a cup of beef stock. Now the beef stock we use is a bouillon cube. We just put this in the microwave for about three minutes and some water. And the red wine, a lot of you are asking why red wine? Well, red wine actually helps bring out the flavor of the meat. You want to use a dry red wine, such as a Pinot, nothing too sweet. Uh, a sweet wine will actually kind of ruin the flavor and actually just ruin the whole dish. So you don't want to use anything like a Lambrusco, but a Chianti, a Pinot, anything like that. Anything that is a, considered a dry wine, a dry red wine, will actually help the flavor of the meat while you're cooking. We are also going to be using a mix of onion and mushroom along with some green pepper. Uh, some of these you will recognize from another video where we use some onion and mushroom and green pepper uh, for one of our other dishes. We are a big fan of recycling and using what we have left over so that's why this is going to be added into this dish. Normally we would not add green pepper to a roast. We don't want anything to go to waste so whatever you have in the house make sure you're also using it all up. We're also gonna add two cloves of garlic that we were going to crush, not mince, to go in with the meat when it goes into the cast iron. Now we wanna start everything in the cast iron to help get that nice brown color before we throw it into the crock pot. So we're, pro we're gonna put this in the cast iron for about five minutes on each side or until you get the color that you want. All right, so today we're using a three pound black Angus beef bottom round roast with our meal tonight. We've already trimmed off all the fat. Normally I leave the fat on to help with the colorization and the caramelization. Chris does not, so we paper, rock, scissors, shot this, and he won, so no meat, fat on the meat. And now that we've gone over all the ingredients, the one thing I'm going to do, because I do have long hair and I hate cooking with my hair down. You'll see I play with it a lot because it just gets in my way. We're gonna use our handy dandy hair clip, step away from the food, up, and wash our hands. Now that my hands are washed and my hair is up, we're gonna start getting everything over to the stove. We're gonna leave these ingredients over here. Uh, this is all the stuff that's gonna go into the crock pot. This is all the stuff we're gonna do on the stove top. So before we move to the stove, we wanna salt and pepper our meat. And you wanna get all sides as best you can. We want that nice flavor and caramelization throughout the meat. That's why you want to try to get all sides as best you can. If you have like little areas, it's just all right to massage the meat to get the rest of the seasoning in over there. You don't want to over salt and over pepper it because you're going to all sides. So once it's all done, we're going to move this cutting board, the pan, the garlic, and the mixed vegetables of onion and mushroom and pepper all over to the stove. We're gonna wash our hands yet again before we move anything, and we're gonna get cooking. We've now moved everything over to the stove. You can see we have our meat, our veg that we're gonna throw into the uh, cast iron right away. We're gonna set the oven, well, excuse me, the stove to medium high, so about seven, eight on um, our stove, and our stove does heat up fairly quickly. Um, once we have that all going, we're gonna wait for the oil to heat up a little bit before we start adding our veg. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna crush our garlic, just press down on your knife, crush. Easier to do this on a countertop than a stovetop, but it is what it is. And yep, this is getting nice and warm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the garlic first because we want to add the 
cloves first. Into the stove it goes. And we're just gonna mix this around to where it gets not only the oil all over the place, but you know, start seasoning up the garlic and everything as well. And now you can hear that sizzle. Once we hear that sizzle going, we're gonna add our vegetable mix. Make sure you get everything out of there. And mix this up too. We kind of want to just let this sweat. We don't want to have it cook all the way before we put the meat in. And you're gonna get that nice garlic onion smell. It's gonna have that, the house is gonna be really flavorful at this point in time. You're gonna enjoy the smell of all of this. So I'm right now, I'm just gonna dig a little bit of a hole. And we're gonna add our meat. And we're gonna let it go for five minutes on each side. So we're gonna take either a giant fork or some tongs. Let this go for five minutes on each side. about five minutes. Just want to turn again. And while you're doing that, you also want to mix your vegetables around too so they don't start sticking to the bottom or getting burnt. All right, so after we've browned our meat, what we want to do is also always stand it on a side just to make sure we don't have any paint showing before throwing it into the crock pot. So you're just going to do this real quickly, you're going to mix your vegetables around so they don't burn or stick to the bottom of the pan. And then once that's all done, we move everything on over to our crock pot. Now, before we add anything to the crock pot, we are going to add a little bit of our wine and a little bit of the stock to the cast iron to help to glaze. Now you might be asking, why are we doing this over here, not on the stove? With the cast iron, the heat lasts for a lot longer. So you can actually get away from de uh, doing the deglazing not on the stove. So we're just gonna mix this up here a little bit before we add it to the pot itself. You're gonna wanna use your tongs once again to move the meat around. So you make sure you're getting everything. This is why I like cast iron cooking so much because you can take a lot of stuff off the stove and you still have that radiant heat that will help with the deglazing or anything else that you can't really do in a cast iron. If I was using a regular you know, metal pot and pan, not a cast iron, this all would have been done on the stove before we even took it off. Now that the bottom's deglazed, I can move my meat into my crock pot. I'm gonna pour everything into here now. So now we're gonna take the, uh, the cast iron pan. We're gonna put the rest of our liquids in. And we're gonna take it back over to the stove top to get a little bit more of a glaze. All right, so we're gonna put this back onto a low, well, medium low, uh, heat. So about seven, eight. Gonna get our handy dandy wooden spoon yet again. And we're just gonna stir the rest of this. Uh, ideally, we would not have done this over here. It all would have been done uh, by the crock pot. Uh, the only problem with being short and trying to lift really heavy things like cast iron, as much as I love to cast iron cook, you kind of can't always get everything, so you gotta improvise on the spot. So this is our improvisation. We're gonna let this come to a simmer while we're uh, stirring. And once we get the nice little boil going, we can actually turn off the stove. Once again, cast iron does keep the heat, so we don't need to keep the heat on for too long. We'll let this simmer and cook the alcohol out of it. I know, it's such a travesty, we're wasting alcohol. It's Wisconsin, I get it. We're supposed to drink it, not cook with it. But I like the cook with wine. I actually love how it tastes on um, the meat. Uh, sometimes I will buy a a cooking wine versus using uh, regular uh, wine. Sometimes it gets pricey. Sometimes your cooking wines or even your cooking sherries, if you go that route, taste a little bit more saltier than the actual wine itself. So it's really based on your taste and what you like to use. I can use both. I just have to reduce the amount of salt I use in one versus when I use the other one. So if you're also looking to um, have low sodium, you know, in your food, Cooking sherries, cooking wines might not be the best way to go use the actual stuff. Uh, now that our cast iron's cooled off a bit, um, 
and we have this nice and simmered. We're gonna take this back over to our crock pot. And now we're gonna have the Duke dump the rest into the pan for us. All right, so now we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. First, we're gonna start with our two cans of cream of mushroom soup. I like using the rubber spatulas to scrape everything out. Now, normally you would, you know, add a cup of water or a cup of milk to get the rest of this out, but because we already have enough liquid in the crock pot, we don't want to add any more because we don't want this thing drowning in liquid. We actually want it to cook. We want it to be come to a point where it's going to fall apart, not just become a solidified mass of nasty water meat. <laughs> After that, I'm going to start my crock pot. I'm going to put it on medium. And we're just going to mix the cream of mushroom soup in with the uh, liquid that we already have in here. That way it's nice and ready to go. Uh, the cream of mushroom soup will also, like the red wine, help with the meat uh, absorb like a lot of the creaminess and juiciness and also just, you know, help make it give, give that more tender flavor and everything. Now we're going to add our thyme. More salt and pepper. Not too much, about an eighth of a teaspoon. Our Italian seasoning. Now, normally I would have out all my Italian seasoning, my basil, my oregano, so on and so forth. But in a pinch, especially if you have don't have enough time, you gotta run to the store to get the rest of the stuff you need, like the carrots, Italian seasoning. We add our garlic powder and our onion powder. Now we're just going to put on our lid and we're going to let this go for the next three hours and high for the last hour. Preferable would be low for six hours if you have the time. If you're going to start late in the day, medium or high just to help get everything done. It's not going to be like throwing it in the oven and rushing it as it is a crock pot. It will still cook evenly and everything so you won't have that, you know, tender one side, dry the other side like you would if you threw it into the oven at the last minute. See you guys in three hours. All right, so our, we've come back from the great outdoors. We've showered. It's just so weird being outside. Guys, don't go out if you can avoid it. Get a grocery order if you can, because that's what we're gonna start doing Ugh, outside. <laughs> but our roast is done. While we've been gone shopping, um, we were actually gone for about three hours. Uh, we did have the kids check on the meat, and it came out pretty good. We're just gonna this and here we have our roast uh, we did use our roux mix of cornstarch and syrup to add to the gravy and now time to carve and the meat actually came out really good um, it's not as red as I would normally like it but it is carving very easily, it's very tender, and it smells delicious. And that is our crock pot roast beef. If you guys have any questions, as always, feel free to you know, just drop us a line, and we'll be more than happy to ask any questions. From Bear Hill Shire, I'm Elizabeth Halston, and thanks for joining. Keep a dead man down there's no more room in hell. There's no more room in hell, boys, no more room in hell. Souls we keep are the double sleep spots. No more room in hell. This has been a production of Bear Hill Films. This is the whatnot um and looking away from the camera bottle. <laughs> we have a new director in the director's chair. Ready for my close up. Woo, massage me! Oh, I like the top, the top, the top. Ah, she admitted I'm taller. By like three inches, so you know, he can suck it up. There <laughs> Put that down! I said it was the O bottle. <laughs> yes, and I caught it right away. Notice that we have one heart healthy and one regular. Like, that's gonna make a difference. I always like a little, uh, 
stew with my seasonings. It's, I'm just gonna get a, a minute, there. <laughs>